Hello, I'm Professor Joe Eiler. I'm the head of the graphic design program at Middlesex Community College in Bedford. Um, I'll start by telling you that those were tough acts to follow, if, 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 <laughs> that, uh, but, but it's always been my job to follow somehow with a dozen women on a trip being the only male beside the jar. <laughs> already had its work cut out for it. But, while on occasion they let me pretend to be in charge and, and strut like the king, uh, I knew quite well where my role was. And, uh, I feel blessed to be let in on this group. It was a wonderful experience. I'm trying to make the cultures through a graphic design class, and these are uh, senior level students usually that are trying to work on branding and marketing and commercial art. Uh, so it's a little different than some of the more uh, fine art pieces that you've been looking at. The experience for me was, was, was fascinating and started in many places, but I can remember walking in and seeing this gentleman and thinking, oh, if I could just get a picture, he's so fascinating, to the look and the statue. And so I kind of snuck this picture, only to realize a few minutes later, he was the professor in the class that was going to spend the afternoon showing us uh, some of the fabulous drawings. So every day, every moment was a uh, was a, a eye-opening experience for me, and it was just thrilling to see artists in another world uh, and what they've been through to get there. So I was. I had promised myself I would try to sketch while I was there. I didn't do nearly as much sketching as I would like to have, but. Um, these were some of the drawings that he gifted us, which I feel like it was, it was just such a treasure, uh, and, and a little sketch of the professor there. How was I gonna bring that back? That was the hardest part. I didn't have a clue. But while we were there uh, in the hotel one morning, we were, we were lucky enough to have Yari and his professor come in and show us how to draw those flowers, those lotus blossoms, and, and explain to us that the carvings had to be closed if it was out of wood because it would splinter or more open if they were out of uh, cast and clay and, and the different meanings of the different shapes. It was just fascinating. So it, it took me back to being a student and drawing because when I came through college there were no computers yet. My students are not used to that aspect. So this is the group as we were taught in the lobby with no materials in the hotel in Phnom Penh. So I started gathering bits and pieces of those flowers and things to show my students and so all my classes have seen lots of photographs of the types of art that you could expect there and how they're all built on geometric shapes. So my opening exercise in my first class was I had to do it, now you do with a pencil and paper, first you have to learn to draw a square. Well, they don't know how to do that. They've only drawn squares on the computer. We didn't have T-square and triangle, which was how I was taught to do it originally. We didn't have T-square and triangle in the lobby of the hotel. But through improv improvisation, many a time when a client meeting and I've had to do something similar, I found that I had to work with a triangle out of my bag or go grab some. So I went to the front desk, I grabbed two postcards. And if they are perfectly cut, when they come out of the printer, they have a right angle to them. So you can use one postcard to run the other postcard up it. And I showed the students how to make a square with two pieces of paper and a pencil. And so one by one, they sat in front of their computers, but they learned how to draw that square. And I made Xeroxes of those flowers to give them. And one by one, they got into learning how, why, the different aspects of it. And I think it fascinated them because they didn't expect to be, you know, with such primitive tools, but that's where we all started. So as the time went by, we, we, I've done it now in a couple of classes, and, and as you can see, we're in front of the computer, but the computer's not on. They're working straightly, straight from their lap and, and their desktop. Uh, this student who, who I'm talking with is actually Malaysian, and she comes back later in this story. I decided for my first project that we would uh, ask the students to import camp hot pepper. 
you know, looking for products that are, are traditional to Cambodia that might come to this country. And so they were given sort of free reign to uh, decide what container it would come in, how you would market it, the look of it. The uh, criteria was that it had to say a product of Cambodia. You have to design a logo for it and you have to decide in what form it's going to be. And while this was meant to be a short project, none of mine never seemed to come out that way in the end. We spent a few extra weeks, but some students, I believe this uh, was an Egyptian student, you know, he wrapped it in, in the rough hemp, uh, and because I wore my chroma into class and we showed them all the slides from, he wrapped the top of the jar. And then did a display. None of these were required. I had no idea what I was gonna get until they came in. The uh, Malaysian suit I was talking about did the centerpiece, um, which is here, where she went back and sculpted the top of the jar. And while I said, well, that might work for some places, that might be too impractical, so there's the other style. But it's her drawing, and the hair of the, the young lady flows into the black cap. So it's just a beautifully designed little piece. This. Uh, student who is from South America did a book that would have recipes in it. When you open the book, there was a pouch of pepper inside, and if I'm correct, my next slide will show you that it also opened up to a pop-up flower inside the book. So one of the things that I try to stress in all my classes is that I want complete uh, creativity unique to each and every student. I don't need clones of me. I don't want your work to look like anybody else's. And for some of our students, that's a real difficult situation. In particular, I find from, from a lot of the Asian cultures, but in general, a lot of students, they just tell me what you want. Tell me what to do. I don't know what I want. You have to experiment. You have to find your own creative voice. And that takes a lot some, for some of them, but as they see other people doing those things, experiencing the world in our world, they start to bring them together. We talked a lot about the culture. We talked about some of the things that you've heard about earlier today. One of the pieces that just fascinated me besides just the, well, everything fascinated me about <laughs> Cambodia, but when we went out in the countryside and, and saw them digging the clay out of the mountain, to stomping it with their feet to make it smooth, to this woman who was making five or six pots a day for 75 cents a piece. And I asked her, through the translator, do you ever make one for yourself? Oh, well, I have a pot, you know, but, but no, do you ever make one that's got your initials on it, or you put your name on it, or you put a special design on it? Oh, no. Do you ever just poke a hole in one or dent it by accident and say, that's mine, I'll keep it? No, because they wouldn't buy it. They must all be the same. There's that instilled, it must be a certain way, there is no other way to do it, and, and no creativity is, is allowed. So I tried to impress that upon my students, that they need to push that creativity. You know, you want to understand the traditional, absolutely, but there's a place for you to find your own voice, and that was important to me. For my second semester, uh, after having some success with the pepper, I never want to do the same project twice <coughs> because I don't want my kids going to the portfolio review and, and the, the reviewers going, oh yes, we saw that project last semester, we saw that before. I want new things, individual things. What am I gonna do? Well, we had the fortune of going down from the uh, Cam Cambridge School to this woman's home and she uh, cooked palm sugar. She let us into her home. It was a fascinating day. So you can see the, uh, the pot, if I can make it work. No, it doesn't wanna go, okay. You can see the pot there under the roof and, and the palm trees in the background. So she gave us palm sugar, which was very generous of her. I mean, this is something she's trying to sell, but she gave us, you know, all it tasted, and it was, it was fascinating. But I was fascinated by her story. And 
the collector of stories. And she told us that every day her husband climbs, he's 80, 80 years old, he climbs the palm tree, which is what, 60, 70 feet tall, to tap and collect the nectar that she's going to later boil down into making palm sugar. So I tried to tell the story as best as I could to my students and then I send them out to do some research so that they have to find out more about how it's made. And then their assignment was to package palm sugar. So I'm running out of ideas for new products for next semester. If you've got one, I'd appreciate uh, any suggestions. But you can see some, some people have uh, follow different paths. We've got the one in the center where the dragons have come to be. Uh, some people actually were from Lowell and the student in the back and uh, second from the left came in with palm sugar that he had gotten in the supermarket in Lowell. And the other student, where did you get that? I looked everywhere for palm sugar. This is right down the street from where I live. <laughs> so this cultural exchange happened. So then, you know, we have to open it up and everybody has to taste it and see what it tastes like. And so the story happens and the, the palm leaf cut out so you can see inside or whether it's a glass jar, uh, and particularly uh, the one on the far right here, she adapted the design that she found online that had um, a Christmas tree cut out on the top and adapted the top to look like it was the palm leaves fronds so that when it, it opens up um, that way and it's got a little window down the side so that you can see how much sugar is left in your package. So they're thinking about marketing, they're thinking about who their audience is, they're thinking about how they can bring a product from another country to this country and sell it to an American audience and still try to keep some of the tradition there so that it would also sell to Cambodians. The piece that I mentioned earlier um, in the first class, the, the Malaysian students are se a senior this year and so the jar in the center was the one she did, but in our portfolio class, I give them the chance to expand on their projects and take it on to be a, a portfolio piece and market it differently. And so she came up with the concept of doing not only the, the red pepper, but the black and the white pepper, changing the girl's outfit and the jewel on her dress to, to match the flavor of the pepper. And then she packaged it into this carrying case so that it would be for sale in airports or gift shops and, and a, a tourist uh, approach. Because I have to tell you, my wife so, loves pepper, so I, I never ate much pepper before I got married. Now there's no salt in the house, just pepper. <laughs> and we eat pepper a lot, so I brought her back pepper. And in some places I found large bags, but there was everywhere I went, they kept saying, oh, you have to buy these little sort of woven cubes that say black pepper and it was in the little tourist markets everywhere you went so finally I said all right I'm going to get her one of those as well and when I opened it up all six of them had a package of pepper about this big with about a dozen grains of pepper in it, it I, I felt cheated <laughs> I was disappointed the packaging was nicer than the product inside so I was really glad I brought the bigger bag when we went to the other markets so this was ge geared towards that experience for her hearing the stories and say, we can do something that the tourists would take home and purchase at a high uh, price point. And when you open up the package inside, there are recipes uh, of, of different traditional dishes that would uh, use the pepper, as well as on the back and on the other inside flap, uh, some of the story of how the pepper is uh, brought to market and the story of some of the artisans in Cambodia. That's my show.